Hi, Sudis, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. I thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So, Esther from UTI Podcast, I mean, the Asian woman who actually came out to stereotype black women on podcast, right? And she got cancelled, actually came out with an uh, apology video. And why she uh, apologized, why she was apologizing, she actually gas lit herself. Because how did you tell me that you are out here to apologize to people that you offended? You are at the same time reminding them that you are Asian. And also you have dealt with so many pretty, uh, pretty hateful comments, like, and all that. I mean, so you are telling us that probably why you said what you said was because you are also being stereotyped as an Asian woman. I mean, that is enough reason for you to be racist towards black people, right? It's all right. And then she also went further to say that that, it, that whatever she said was actually not her opinion. And I am asking who actually said that? She was the one that said it. Now, some people are really moving wild. Why did I say that? That apology is not apology. And they probably are losing money. And they felt like, oh, yeah, how are we supposed to do this? We have to just come out and apologize so we can move on with our podcast and all that. Do not fall for it. These people can make money with black people thinking that they are smart. Let's get into this. Yeah, um, I want to take this moment to sincerely apologize for a, pro uh, for a topic that I brought up. Um, it wasn't my view or opinion, but I understand that even bringing it up was super inappropriate and harmful. And I've heard so many of you guys, um, especially in the black community and among black women. And like, I'm just sorry for perpetuating a harmful stereotype. And moving forward, I will no longer bring up any topics that could be harmful to anybody. I mean, we're all Asian and we've dealt with like pretty hateful like stereotypes as well and i should have known better because i've been hurt by those two you know so i truly truly apologize for that and i like it wasn't my intention to hurt anyone but i understand that intentions don't matter when the impact was so hurtful and i'm learning and i'm growing from this and yeah i don't know what to say other than that i'm i'm really sorry yeah i think that's that's the whole point here is that <clears throat> obviously like she said we're all human we are all human like everyone makes mistakes um i can't take back any of the things i've said none of us can but what we can do is try to make the changes going forward uh if you want to hate us regardless that's that's your freedom to do so but i think that the people who support us have been waiting for us to own up and take accountability for maybe some of the things that have hurt them as well and um and that's what we're going to do our best to do So the podcast Under the Influence just came out with an apology video. If you don't know, they've been getting canceled for the last couple of weeks, which is valid. And I was a common listener to the podcast and I was a supporter of the people on the podcast. Um, I started listening to them a little bit around last year um, because I listened to Subber Talks and Subber Talks is a fan of them. So I thought like support the support, you know what I mean? And a lot of shit that has been coming up I do not remember hearing uh, because I used to listen to UTI only at work in my ear. So a lot of shit that they said, I probably fucking zoned out. But just all the shit that I have seen on TikTok, fucking crazy. But anyways, they came out with an apology video. I watched a part of it. My whole thing is if y'all are truly sorry, why are y'all blocking black women on y'all social media? Because I am blocked and what's crazy is i didn't even say i didn't even send hate i just confronted as a supporter how hurt i was that y'all are blocking people and not addressing it so it's just kind of like your whole apology is just like shit because you're blocking people who are trying to educate you so <laughs> okay y'all let's all watch this apology made by esther from the under the influence podcast yeah um I want to take this moment to sincerely apologize for a, pro uh, for a topic that I brought up. Um, 
Yeah, it wasn't it my view or opinion, but I understand that even bringing it up was super inappropriate. And okay, harmful. pause. So it wasn't her view or her opinion, but she brought it up just because um, and started giggling with it. Okay. It up was super inappropriate and harmful. And I've heard so many of you guys, um, especially in the black community and well, yeah. among black women and... Like, I'm just sorry for perpetuating a harmful... Rather than a harmful stereotype, it is a blatant display of racism. Like, what's not clicking? Like, I mean, we're all Asian, and we've dealt with, like, pretty hateful, like, stereotypes as well. And I should have known better because I've been hurt by those two, you know? I get what you're saying, but right now you're basically victimizing yourself and being like, I know too, because I'm Asian. And it's true. Of course, Asians have gone through racism stereotyping like it's very true but like is now the time i feel like you're more concerned about the money that's potentially you know drifting away rather than the sincerity of this apology yeah i don't know what to say other than that i'm i'm really sorry yeah i think that's that's the whole point here is that <clears throat> like she said we're all human yes of course we are all humans but we are not all racist okay goodbye it wasn't my view or opinion, but I understand that even bringing it up was super inappropriate and harmful. That was her view and that was her belief. There's not a time in my life at all that I have ever said anything out of my mouth that I did not trust in at all. You said that for a reason. There was not one woman of color. There wasn't a black woman in that room. And you, you felt in your spirit that you had to come out and say that out of nowhere. Now, when you realize it was wrong is when your own community done turned on you and that even they're saying, hey, whoa, that wasn't right. You're that same person that says something racist, looks around the room and is like, hey, 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 don't we all feel the same way? And everybody looked at you like, no. And then you say, we're all Asian. We all have pretty much dealt with some kind of discrimination. So you, you know, you know that this is wrong and you still decided to say it out your mouth. You stated it was a harmful stereotype and you feel in your spirit you felt it in your heart that you still had to come out and do this get this podcast out of here and don't let them come back because that money is drying up and they got their hands out because they look like they're panhandling hi this is my first video ever um that i'm posting to tiktok so i'm a little bit nervous but i wanted to come on here and um add my two cents about the apology video from under the influence um, podcast show and specifically when Esther says that her view on black women that she voiced in that video the original one is not her view or her opinion and I want to talk about that um, so first it is your view and it is your opinion because why would you say something um, like that if you didn't feel some type of connection to it. Um, second, what needed to happen in this apology video is a discussion, a table discussion about exactly what was said, um, you know, where it came from, why you felt compelled to say it, and what you can do better in the future to unlearn this opinion um and that is really what the the con that type of conversation and video is what black women deserved not what you gave was under the bare minimum let's just put it like that so i just want to talk about the fact that it is a really important conversation that we need to have because for one, I don't blame you for adopting that type of opinion. We develop our viewpoints from the environment that we grow up in, right? So if you grew up in an environment with other people who held that opinion, you are going to adopt the opinion. And that's it's just, it's just natural. That's how it works. Um, but what I do blame you for is not being critical about such a hurtful stereotype, not thinking about it more, asking yourself where it came from, why it's still here, and what function it serves. Because it's such a specific stereotype. 
So let's talk about it. So the stereotype is that black women have loose vaginas. There's also another stereotype about Asian women and that they have tight vaginas. It's not a coincidence that these two stereotypes are so directly related and so opposite to one another. And it tells, we can speak a lot about what that does, what these stereotypes do to the two racial communities, black women and Asian women, um, what it does to each one and how they relate to one another because of these stereotypes. And questions like that, you know, why it's still here, what function it serves, are the type of conversations that we need to have because we need to name it. First off is naming it. That's like what has to be done. Not once in that apology video did I see anyone say, reflect specifically on what was said about black women. They kind of just beat around the bush. And I know it's uncomfortable to revisit what you said, but you have a responsibility to do so because it came out of your mouth and because it's so dehumanizing. Um, and yeah, I could have, I think this video, this conversation, apology video could have been, they could have gone a thousand different ways with it, um, educational ways, but they chose not to. They chose to do under the minimum and just a very quick and easy apology and then shut the camera off. And I think that's unacceptable because you have all the tools and and resources to research this topic. And it took you two weeks to make this apology video. In that two weeks, you could have done your research. You could have spoken to black women. You could have educated yourself and then come on to make an appropriate video. But you didn't. And that's what I have a problem with. I have no desire I have no energy or effort to want to listen to what the fuck UTI has to say. I, I simply don't give a fuck. I keep getting tagged and sent the video clips of them addressing the backlash and apology, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And I simply don't care. I don't care to watch it. I don't care to listen to what bullshit they have to say because it's all bullshit to me. All right. I'm also not going to give my time or my energy for their monetary gain. I'm not going to do that. Fuck that. I'm not going to go to their YouTube. I'm not going to go on any other social media platform to listen to what they have to say and for them to make monetary gain off of it. I'm not. I'm not. This is not something that just happened a day ago or days ago or a week ago. This has been going on for weeks. They had weeks to address this, guys. And they're, I just, they, they've been posting other shit and not addressing this. And suddenly now we're supposed to care and we're supposed to watch and care what they have to say when they had weeks to address this. No, I don't fucking think so. I'm not, I'm not listening to any bullshit that you have to say. It's bullshit. If they really cared and they were actually genuinely sorry about the shit that went down and about what they said. They would have made this weeks ago, but they didn't. They let it fester. They let it grow. And I'm just, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't care to listen to what they have to say. So y'all can be out here posting other content instead of addressing it and talking about how you guys are going to address it in a video and continue to make content outside of the backlash and start deleting comments and block people who call you out rightfully so on your platforms and now suddenly we have to we have to care what you have to say <laughs> okay y'all know how i feel about podcasts not everybody deserves a podcast because nobody wants to hear what the fuck you have to say and i will continue saying that because i clearly i clearly do not want to listen to whatever the fuck they have to say and i stand on that i am standing on business but anyway, I wish y'all well. And yeah, um, I want to take this moment to sincerely apologize for pro uh, for a topic that I brought up. Um, it wasn't my view or opinion. 
I don't know, I will always be biased when it comes to apologies coming from influencers or people who have platforms because I feel like 100% of the time when it comes to apologies, it's always going to be coming off as insincere, not really knowing like what they're apologizing for. And on top of that, it just kind of feels like I end up hating the person 100% again. <laughs> On top of not mentioning about the whole Drew situation at all, but very dismissing about like the entire situation about the racist comment in general is very weird because I just wish like when it comes to apologies, they would reiterate and like restate like what they said and then maybe mention a few things from other creators that like of calling them out basically of why they said was inappropriate and like they would learn, you know, and educate others as the that's the whole point of a, a learning process right and these apologies just come off so insincere especially because she's dismissing this issue by bringing up the fact that she's also a person of color but it's just weird it's not an excuse and on top of that this is why intersectionality is so important because although like yes east asians also go through some fetishizations and um emasculations it's very different from the experiences of black people and I will always stand by this, that in no way, shape, or form are death threats ever appropriate, and she did not deserve any of that. But that entire thing should not be used as an excuse to victimize yourself in this situation when you've hurt so many other people. And just because you state that you're a person of color doesn't mean that you're not racist. Like, people of color can be racist as well. And this is why we should take it upon ourselves to you know, be the better person, the bigger person, and educate the people in our communities why these prejudices and stereotypes and racism is not okay. And let's normalize calling out anti-blackness in Asian communities. It's no motherfucking shade, but that under the influence podcast only apologize so they need to start pushing content because they money running dry. Like they just don't care. They don't care. I'm telling you, they only doing this to push their content out because they they run out of money. Don't fall for it, thing. The Under the Influence podcast getting all the hate that they're getting right now is well-deserved hate. Not only because of the Drew situation, it's because of past situations too. Specifically, the situation I'm talking about is when Esther said that racist anti-black rhetoric about black women saying, oh yeah, black women have way larger holes in there than other races of women and how they all co-signed onto it. Yeah. Y'all getting this hate was hate that was ready to happen. In Suburbs Talk, you ain't getting no grace from me either. Only because I keep seeing people be like, oh, Suburbs Talk did they big one by not posting this week's episode with them on there. Y'all need to stop and actually think. After all the weirdo stuff that they say on the Under the Influence podcast, Suburbs Talk still had the audacity to invite them onto their podcast. That should speak volumes to y'all. That should really speak volumes. The Under the Influence podcast getting all the hate that they're getting right now is well-deserved. So you mean to tell me that y'all made the apology video, was condescending, and had an attitude? This is your typical racism apology video from non-black people. I'm not surprised. Under the Influence is in the same spot Shits and Giggles was when they made their apology because that shit was ass. Because while Under the Influence, I could tell they actually tried to take that shit serious, Shits and giggles, they didn't take that shit serious. But when it came to shits and giggles, their shit seemed to actually planned out and they knew what they were going to say and how they wanted to do it. Under the influence, dead ass seemed like they just weaned the fuck out of that shit. So it's like, who who's here is worse? Because you could say, oh yeah, Esther and all of them, they were so scared to say shit, so you knew they were serious. But at the same time, every time someone talked, no one knew what the fuck to say. While when it came to shits and giggles, yeah, you can tell they wasn't serious, especially Fuha, because his ass couldn't even look at the fucking camera. Yet, they actually knew what they wanted to say and was very direct about the shit they were saying. And to me, it's just way more funny because two POC podcasts don't know how to address POC people. <laughs> okay, so I want black women to be clear. That apology wasn't for you at all. That apology was for major white corporations that weren't going to mess with them after the backlash of this. That apology was for the self proclaimed social justice warriors that are their base that would feel weird about continuing to watch them after what they said. Never was that for black women. 
an apology that says we just need to watch what we say because of the level that we're at now they're not sorry they're sorry that they got caught they're sorry that people care enough about them not me but they're sorry that enough people care about them that this even became a thing you know i made a video like a year ago talking about the <laughs> socal like asian american podcasts and now that these people are getting called out and they're getting canceled yeah i knew it you know low-key being a hater pays off it does when you think about it because i knew these people were already problematic i've heard like some things speculation whatever <laughs> like i knew the time was ticking for them someone was gonna say something real bad shit crazy and then the internet is gonna be like nope this is the last straw we've had with y'all and with under the influence i'm not surprised about it at all like <laughs> just the way a lot of them speak they speak very lowly educated if i'm gonna be honest it's just and they're <laughs> They really set back a lot of Asian Americans, to be very honest. And it's kind of sad, but it's also kind of true. Like, unfortunately, like, this obviously does not represent every single Asian American. It doesn't even represent the SoCal people. Because I know there's SoCal Asians that's like, no, that's not me. That's not us, you know. And they already get a bad rep. But I don't know what it is down there in that air or whatever. But a lot of them just don't know when to shut the fuck up. I'm not gonna go into the suburb talks because that's a whole nother can of worms they're treading on thin ice also to be honest but you know what do what you will with that information people are gonna be like because i've seen so many comments and people are like oh, i knew i could trust them we'll see about that mm -hmm. we'll see but if nothing bad happens and they don't get canceled and stuff like that nobody says anything stupid then you know what y'all can attack me for that but i was right about these podcasts I learned today that that girl, Esther, is not a girl. She's a 30-year-old woman. I saw that she put out an apology, apology video, and it was not taken or perceived well by the public, and rightfully so. Here's my take on it, and it really, really annoys me that I noticed this, and I'm sure somebody else noticed this, was that they rushed the apology so that they can, so that she can play victim, and then the guy next to her could say like hey so you know you guys you gotta stop like the hate and you know threatening her life that wasn't an apology for black women for hurting a community for being racist that was a plea for safety if they hadn't gotten so much hate from not just the black women community right from the from the world oh my god it's atrocious like like even from their own community and if she hadn't had her life threatened they would have never apologized they had no intentions of apologizing that they were just doing it so that people can back off on her so this is all i got from this video and i am going to ask this <clears throat> If that was not her idea, whose idea was that? Who said it? It's really amazing how people are refusing to take accountability for some certain things or for the things they do or say. She said it was not her opinion or her whatever, but she was the one that said it. Who said it? Whose mouth did we hear that from? I am sure that they are not sorry. And now she decided to gaslight herself by saying that, I mean, she is also Asian. I mean, trying to victimize herself too. So they all go through such thing too. Like, what do you go through that you open your mouth to stereotype black women, right? And you are telling us why you are apologizing for what you said, that it is not your opinion, right? And then that you also go through things, you are like, as Asian, you all go through things like this. They are not sorry. 
I am just, I am sure you all know that they are not sorry. And uh, I really don't care. Um, I am sure black women also do not care about your apology. I mean, you all can move on from where you start. But there is something that I have noticed. Probably the money is already dropping, you know. The income aren't dropping like it used to. And they have to come back with an apology later. I mean, apology video to tell us how sorry they are. I mean, it's either you accept it or you like, you know, let go. We don't care, but we just have to say what we have to say because everybody's talking about it. See, now let me tell us something. If these people knew that they are wrong or they were wrong or like, you know, they actually blocked some black women. Why that was going on? People were trying to advise them and ask them, why did you all like, you know, wake up to stereotype black women and the rest of it? And uh, they were blocking black people. That is to until this very moment, they have not unblocked, except you have like you can view with another account. That is to tell you that they know what they are doing, uh, that it was her opinion, it was Esther's opinion. Because tell me how you said something. But you asked that, I, I mean, you guys, I mean, you could cut this out. I mean, it came out from your mouth, right? And now you are telling us that it was not your opinion. Whose opinion was that? I mean, you all are very, very, I mean, some people of color are very dangerous. When I say dangerous, very dangerous to other black people. Yes. Because I don't know how, but. If somebody could sit down, I mean, may God forgive me, I don't know. If somebody could sit down to talk about, I don't know, talk about other people, like a woman's private part with other people, especially with men there, trust me, I really don't know what that person cannot do. And I am really not scared about the things she said on camera. I am very much scared about the ones that did not make it to the camera. See you all in my next video. Bye.